What is up, Sugar Spice Squad? If you're new here, my name is Sugar, and welcome to my channel. So, we got some tea today. So, Diddy's three sons got into a tense confrontation with Ray J at Tara Electra's Halloween party this past weekend in LA. According to reports, Chris Brown stopped it before it became a full-on fight. Sources indicate that towards the end of the party, Ray J exited to the parking lot with his entourage, which included Amber Rose and manager David. And that's when Diddy's three sons, Quincy, Justin, and Christian approached him. According to sources, the brothers closed in on the singer, expressing their frustration over some of the public remarks Ray J has made re regarding Diddy. Tensions escalated among the men, but then Chris Brown allegedly saw the altercation from his car and defused the situation. One fan wrote, they need to be fighting their father. Another wrote, Chris Brown breaking up a fight, we really in the upside down right now. Another fan said, should have let him fight. Ray J hopped on a phone call with WAC 100 and claims that eight ninjas confronted him. I'm talking to the exposure homies. They talking about the Combs is trying to rush you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They tried to rush you in Miami? Nigga, in LA, nigga. Where? Bro, you know I'm not gonna call y'all because this could go somewhere else, and I'm like, you know, at the club, dog. But don't you didn't have donut them with you? I had nobody with me. Dog. So how many of them was it? Two, three? What? I don't know, like eight. Oh, so it was them and eight, and they tried to rush you for real. <laughs> yeah, but don't put this up, blood. Nah, it's going out. Nah, blood. It's going. It's just going out, dog. Like. <laughs> So, so my question to you is, can I put the other stuff out that we've been knowing about? Nah, they 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 too young. Like it's like that. Like I, I moved away from it. Like, huh? I tried, to talk some, I tried to talk some sense into like what happened, but I just I'm saying luckily the homie Chris is here. What? Wait, what, Chris? Chris Brown, bro. But well, whack. Don't put this shit up online. Bro. Nah, was this? Oh, fuck them niggas. Nah, but still, don't it's going up. It's already online. It's online that the niggas tried to rush you and you ain't told me shit. So that's a lot of tea. Spices, what are y'all thoughts on this? Leave a comment down below. All right, let's get into the next hot topic. So Metro Boomin is hit with a lawsuit from a woman alleging sexual assault and pregnancy claims. According to reports, Metro Boomin is being sued by a woman who says he allegedly raped her in 2016. According to TMZ, the legal documents were filed by a woman named Vanessa Lemestier. Allegedly, Metro invited Vanessa to his Los Angeles studio in September of 2016, where she claims to have witnessed him misusing codeine, despite his friends trying to get him to stop. Vanessa states that while at Metro's studio, she took half a Xanax and a shot of alcohol to help deal with the grief of her son's death. She claims that shortly after, she blacked out on the couch. In the lawsuit, Vanessa also added that she later woke up in a bed with Metro on top of her, allegedly assaulting her. According to reports, after blacking out and regaining consciousness, she claims that Metro told her they were in a Beverly Hills hotel room and it was time to go. Although she had no recollection of how she arrived there, Vanessa later discovered that she was pregnant and says that she wasn't intimate with anyone else during that period. She says that she chose to terminate the pregnancy in November of 2016. Now, that is a lot of tea. One fan wrote, quote, All that projecting they was doing, everybody that rolled with Kendrick is a deviant. Another fan said, well, 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 as if his old tweets wasn't proof enough. DJ Academics spoke on this and says that there is potentially pretentiousness involved. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and just be like, "Yo, yeah, got him." Now, what this does do though is it shows the pretentiousness of somebody like Kendrick. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not making this a Kendrick thing because when Kendrick basically panders and starts up, "Oh, so and so has a case," you then look very guilty with everybody that surrounds you. Well. What, what what about Dr. Dre? Dr. Dre had allegations and there was supposedly more proof to maybe those being true. What about him? You had your biggest verse on Metro's album. What about him? It just kind of shows the pretentiousness of especially people, but even Kendrick. 
in kind of saying this to try to act as if um, the people he associates with is beyond moral repro reproach or beyond some of the stuff that we're seeing happening now. Right? Now, I don't think Kendrick is going to speak about the Dr. Dre or Metro Boomin cases. If anything, Kendrick will just say he had no clue this was going on. Spices, what are y'all thoughts on this? Leave a comment down below. All right, let's get into the next hot topic. So according to reports, Tory Lanez has called out his former lawyer by filing an ethics complaint with the State Bar of California, claiming that he hired his ex-attorney, Sean Holy, to represent him without realizing that she had connections to Jay-Z's label, Rock Nation, in which Megan is signed to. Tory claims that, that Holly was a key producer on Hulu's popular series, Reasonable Doubt, as evidence of Holly's potential conflict of interest. According to reports, Tory continued to claim that Desiree Perez, the CEO of Rock Nation, helped Megan with her statements to the police. Tory says that his attorney, Holly, abandoned him just five days before the guilty verdict on December 18th, even after he had paid her $200,000 and $300,000 for her services. Tory believes that because he refused to accept a guilty plea, Holly stopped fighting for his innocence. He also says that she told his DNA expert not to do an in-depth test on the gun, even though he insisted he had never touched it. Now, this is so wild. One fan wrote, she about to lose her license just for the mere allegation. Nasty work. Another fan said, still crazy that he got charged with possession of a gun that couldn't confirm he even touched. And another fan said, JC set him up. Now, Spices, what are y'all thoughts on all this? Leave a comment down below, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Bye. I love talking to girls. I love, like, you know what I'm saying, being around them. I love everything about women, like, but at the same time, I just, for some reason, I guess maybe because I'm just a charming dude and a lot of the girls that, like, I'm friends with are... are Who the hell know, said you charming, Tori? Me. <laughs> <laughs>